All right, so here is the meta video for what I was going to talk about, what I mentioned in my lists. So chances are you've wound up in a game that looks something similar to this, where everybody's just playing what they want at the beginning of the game. The beginning of the game, comps don't really matter, but we haven't hit the point yet where people are insta-locking good comps. Uh, the map metas are still shaking out, but we still have a general idea of what the metas on each map are going to be. So, as you see, as this game is unfolding, people are playing standard picks, but as people die and as fights end, people are going to start flexing for counters. And this is going to lead us into flex windows and the points where you should be countering people. Um, using your scoreboard here to find out who's doing what, who's doing the most, etc. is going to be your best way to find counter options. Um, you want to make sure that you're paying attention to the scoreboard. They've given us live tools so that we can make adjustments mid-game. And you need to make sure that you're using those tools as you play. So, as you can see, uh, I played Widowmaker on Gibraltar on attack. It's pretty standard. Um, got a really good first point. And it's on the defending team to now counter back. And it's on me to identify that my team is dying, my team is dead. I identify that I need to flex, so I go commit suicide. And now I'm going to flex into a counter option for the May Reaper Orissa Brawl. I'm going to identify that Sights and Widowmaker isn't going to work, and then I need to flex. I'm going to flex to Farah, and then I'm going to snowball this point because they're playing stuff that can't kill me, and then there's my flex option. My team is also going to make adjustments as we go along. But for the most part, everything is devolved into a mirror with a single volatile pick turning into a counter. So now it's just on us to execute. And this is where we get into the meta compositions. So in the mirror, both tanks are perfectly fine. Both supports are perfectly fine. Uh, the Ana on the opposing team is not in the mirror, which is going to be a detriment to her team. It's actually arguably, in my opinion, one of the reasons why they lose first point here. But devolving to the mirror is always going to be your safest option because this is Overwatch. So I flex Farah and get value against the Reaper and the May, And now it's just Snowball. The opposing tank flexes because I'm on Farah, And we now have the counter chain going. So because Farah is a light counter to D.Va, the DPS now have to flex. And we're just snowballing the chain because they can't flex because we're still fighting. So this is going to lead us into where you have a standard composition and you're just playing it to play it out because you opened something and DPS aren't taking their flex windows. So the snowball is just going to keep going until the DPS can make those flex windows. This is why you have to hold W and you have to fight in Overwatch 2. You can't just sit there. You're going to lose two points if you don't flex. So, let's go ahead and look at a standard composition you might see in rank during quick play. Being pretty, you know, high tier, not low tier. You're going to see something with the supports playing Ana, Bap, Mercy, or Zenyatta. Tanks are probably going to be on Zarya or Diva unless they're trying to have fun. And DPS are going to probably open up Hit Scan, which is going to be Sojourn, Ash, Cassidy um 76 you might have genjis here and you might have widows but they fundamentally all play the same in a standard comp with no synergy so when you open up any game the comps don't have to have synergy because of the new dps passive on top of uh your tanks might get hard countered as soon as they walk out the same for the supports so first fight composition doesn't matter currently but it will down the road so when we look at a standard composition like this, you're going to see heroes that are volatile, like Zenyatta. Um, I would argue D.Va is very volatile here, um, even though she's super strong and overtuned right now. I think that she's super volatile. Uh, good Zarya, good Sombra, good Symmetra can make it so that a D.Va has to insta-flex. Um, Bap suffers from the same weakness that Ana does, that if they're running the correct composition, it's insta-flex. And then Mercy might not get value, and you might need more damage or more healing, so the Mercy might get mitigated by your own composition, but Mercy's the only outlier for that, where you get mitigated by your own team. So we're going to go ahead and look at 
what are the counter options when people are running meta hit scan. So when teams are running meta hit scan, you're going to see Ash, Soldier, and Cassidy, Soldier 76, Widowmaker. Um, you're going to see a lot of people run dive into it, and that's because dive is super strong into hit scan. It's one of the only counters to hit scan in the game because hit scan is the most consistent form of DPS. So you're going to see things like Kiriko, Tracer, Winston, Genji, Moira. Uh, you might see a Sombra in there. You might see a Hammond. You might see a Diva. Um, the counter chain is going to continue. So if your goal is to remove these meta hit scans, you're going to wind up on some form of dive. And then as that's where we start to evolve the game, the pros are going to start playing dive now. And uh, the ladder is going to pick up as soon as playoffs start, probably for Al. People will see that dive is strong again. The reason that I have omitted Sombra in this key comp here, even though strong, Sombra is technically stronger than Tracer, is I think that the Sombra nerfs hit her damage so substantially that Tracer is a more valuable pick in dive. And remember that dive DPS is about survivability and finishing the kills that the supports and the tanks create. So if we were going to counter this composition, we're going to wind up on Brawl, which is going to be a Reaper, May, Roadhog, uh, with Moira Kiriko. But Bridget is also a solid option. I would actually put Bridget above the Moira pick, but Moira is safer than Bridget. That's why all three are present. Um, and then we're going to go ahead and look at the next group here which is going to lead us into what counters the Brawl. So if you're playing this standard Brawl comp, the Flyers is what answers it. And nobody currently in ranked, I think I've had, out of 400 games I've played, I think I've had four or five Pharahs. Like, Pharah is very rare. Only does she have a Mercy, does it usually become common. A naked Pharah you don't see, like I played earlier. Um, Echo is another one that you don't see as very often because the flyers just are shit. So the tanks don't synergize with them, but if you have to, you can play Zarya or D.Va. Um, and then the counter to the flyers is again, we're back to the hit scans. So this means that you're going to wind up countering it to dive again. So when I talk about this chain of compositions, basically what it means is that if somebody is opening Sojourn because it is strong, we can assume that the counter to Sojourn is Dive, and that the composition that's supporting the Sojourn will lose to Dive. And then you get into the Brawl Comp. Well, the Brawl Comp beats Dive. That's your flex option. So when you're playing Brawl, you wind up in a situation where they have to go Flyers, but Flyers are currently weak in the meta. So this gives us a breakpoint. Uh, counter breakpoints occur when... An opponent has to play a counter that is subpar or even to the heroes you are currently playing. And because Farah Echo are so weak without Mercy, and if you can remove Mercy from the opponent via DPS or a sing singular flex, you would wind up in a situation where you could hard counter the Flyer comp. So we're literally at Brawl. Brawl is the end point currently because of the bad matchup. So we're going to go ahead and look at a chain here um with a counter chain the first player is going to start off on genji and the second team is going to counter the genji with winston after one or two fights the winston is going to be the only hero that can mitigate the genji the opposing genji who's countered has a flex option and he's going to flex into reaper to counter the winston now the winston who's on a tank that was designed to counter his original pick has a flex window and now, because Reaper is an anti-tank option, the Winston doesn't have a good pick. So this is where a flex breakpoint comes in. Now, a tank player has to play what would work, quote-unquote, best into the chain, which in most cases is Roadhog for a, just a pure brawl. You get away with Reinhardt here, but it changes the chain entirely. But the breakpoint is still the same. Reaper is a tank counter. And because Reaper is a tank counter, you have to play a bad matchup. If the Reaper is pressured, Reaper can play Farah into Roadhog, which then gives Roadhog the D.Va option. But if you play the Reaper into Roadhog, he doesn't have that option. So it's key to remember when you identify these breakpoints, when you're on a broad counter hero, whether it's Reaper, Bastion, Symmetra, for hit scans, they're, they're pretty uncounterable. I would say, and usually wind up defaulting into the mirror a lot. 
So the big thing to remember here is to identify these breakpoints. So now we're going to look at a team composition that is in this counter sequence. So team one opens on Genji, Sombra, Winston, Kiriko, and Moira in a dive meta. Team two then counters after losing first fight by flexing into a Winston, flexing into a Moira, flexing into a Reaper, flexing into a Kiriko, and then they already have the Moira that they flexed into. This leaves them with an open pick. The opposing, uh, the extra DPS could have picked something that isn't bad into this, or they could flex into something that is countering one of these picks here. Now, if we continue the sequence, because the supports have both resolved into a mirror with Kiriko and Moira and Kiriko and Moira, that means that this counter sequence must terminate. Now, if we look at the Sombra matchup, Sombra is lightly countered by Moira, and also because of the Winston, Kiriko, and Reaper pick, Sombra loses her value in who she's going to hack and farm, basically. So therefore, the Sombra is in a flex window, too, because of the Moira pick. And then you look at that sequence, it resolves, again, because there is a support mirror. So Moira v. Moira. Now, if we look at the tank sequence, where Winston was countering Genji, the opposing tank might flex into Roadhog to counter the Winston. And then the opposing team might counter into Ana to counter said Roadhog. The Ana counter isn't optimal because Ana is countered by Moira and Kiriko. So you have a sequence where you wind up in a bad pick and you have to identify that counter early. So if we look at the Reaper sequence, again, going back to the video I played at the beginning, Reaper gets countered by Farah, you play an air pick. That means that the Reaper has the flex option of Widow, and if you're the opposing team, one of the currently only ways to deal with Widow is to go dive. So again, the sequence ends and terminates in a tank mirror. So with all of the sequences terminating, we can get a rough idea that dive and brawl are going to be meta. So in this example sequence, the blue team's final composition turns out to be Winston, Moira, Kiriko, Reaper, and Widow while Red Team is currently on Winston, Moira, Kiriko, Cassidy, and Reaper. Um, and you can pretty much assume that most comps are going to devolve into this if you truly embrace the counter system. So if we assume that Dive and Brawl are the current breakpoints in the counter meta, we can go ahead and look at some examples of what are Brawl and Dive compositions that you could use in Comp Q. So starting off with Dive, one of the basic dives you can open up with is going to be the standard, you know, Genji Tracer, Farah, Sombra, supported by a Diva, a Wrecking Ball, or a Winston. The support options are going to be Kiriko and Moira and Lucio. You're going to want synergy. So if you aren't playing uh, the Moira, you're playing Lucio. If you aren't playing the Lucio, you're playing Moira. Kiriko synergizes well with both. You're going to see the DPS options currently being Genji, Farah, Tracer, and Sombra. I would actually argue that Sombra might not fit on this list after the nerfs anymore because her DPS is lackluster with the hack um, if it truly is getting nerfed. Farah is an option. You can cut the brawl off at the pass and open on Farah, but realistically, you're not going to have a mercy. So the Farah is a subpar pick, which means that your two best options are going to be Genji and Tracer. Uh, Winston is going to be the best in the tank category because Winston counters most of the general compositions you're going to see. He deals with Genji's, he deals with backline hit scan, he deals with half the support roster as long as he's supported by DPS. Diva is another good option, but Diva doesn't have the shield to mitigate healing, which is why Winston edges out Diva. Wrecking Ball is another option for super DPS but you lack any form of mitigation on healing, so it turns into a DPS race. So this is going to be a standard dive composition, and you can be safe to open up pretty much on every map with this composition, because currently there are no bad maps in the map pool rotation for dive. So I would actually recommend opening up dive on pretty much every map right now. So the counter to dive is going to be brawl. And... This is where we get into the fun picks. So your support options are going to be Moira and Kiriko again, just because the synergy is amazing. They have great heals. Uh, you have a flex option for Moira into Bridget, which is going to be purely if you want to brawl around, say, a Reinhardt, 
or you're trying to sustain, you know, a DPS in the pocket, uh, your tank options are going to be Reinhardt, Diva, and Roadhog. I would not recommend Diva unless they're playing double hit scan um, because the Diva mitigation doesn't have value when you're brawling. You're going to want just the burst damage that Diva provides and to be a body that just gets into the scrum. And then Roadhog is king in brawl uh, for the tanks. He's, I think it's 1,500 effective HP. He's got one shot potential and he's a tank buster. For the DPS options for Brawl, you're going to play May, Reaper, Bastion, Junkrat, Torb, and Symmetra. Uh, I think Torb and Symmetra are niche picks, but they're both super strong in Brawl when they aren't focused. Uh, Junkrat is going to be your big burst, while Bastion is going to be your consistent long damage. And then May and Reaper are going to be your consistent stay alive so that your supports can pocket your tank. Uh, with Kiriko's Invul and Moira's Orb... Moira can fade out, Kiriko can teleport while you buffer all of the healing onto your team. And I genuinely think this is where we're headed in the meta. I think that this Brawl comp only gets beat by Flyers, and the Flyers are super weak right now. So I don't think that you can just immediately flex to a Flyer uh, and resolve the issue. I do think that one thing that needs to be taken with a grain of salt with this is... While Farah and Echo counter the Brawl, I do think the Brawl can play into the Flyers evenly because their damage is not high enough. So it devolves into a Brawl Mirror. And if the game devolves into a Brawl Mirror, we're going to wind up in a situation where you're playing Roadhog into Roadhog. You're going to be playing, you know, May and Reaper, maybe a Bastion, maybe a Junkrat. I mean, the, the Brawl DPS, there's a lot of options there because of the DPS counters. But realistically, the DPS are the only people with flex options. Uh, Kiriko and Moira are pretty staples because of their survivability in Brawl. So I would actually like to see, you know, a lot of people experiment with this, with the DPS role. I think that it's pretty safe to say that Kiriko... Roadhog and Moira are going to be your staple core of a brawl with the DPS supporting accordingly. I do think that the DPS have flex windows, but realistically, most of them are going to get ruined by the brawl. And now it's just who plays the objective better. Um, I think that this is going to be the, the way that the meta terminates because currently there is no good counter to Roadhog because Ana and Drunker Queen both get purged by Kiriko. Um, the only way that I think this changes for right now is if the Roadhog cannot purge anti uh, via Kiriko, or maybe Junker Queen's anti can't be purged at all. There's a lot of options for Blizzard to play with here, but I think that for the gist of it, I think that for the most part, you're going to see compositions that wind up something similar to this. Um, but yeah. I think that the dive is the safest bet to open and you're going to devolve into Brawl. If you open on Brawl, you're going to basically invite Chaos, but Dive doesn't invite Chaos because the easiest way to counter Dive is Brawl and people already do that on ladder. Um, and that's going to sum up the meta video right now. So I'll elaborate more on some of these comps and videos to come. And I hope you all like, comment, and subscribe. And I will see you all in the next video. Much love. Bye-bye.